Yo, what is up guys? Today I'm going to be going over the top 10 things I wish I would have done before playing through Project Zomboid's most recent update, Build 41. This is just my own opinion and list on the matter, but hopefully all of you will be able to take something away from this video. The tips won't be ordered in any way either. Anyways, let's just begin. Now, in the world, there is a certain radio station that gives the player a huge advantage when it comes to the world. It's called the Automated Emergency Broadcast System, and it randomly spawns in some radios throughout the map. This broadcast gives future reports on the weather, and more importantly, warns you about the helicopter event, the bane of everyone's existence, and a real game ender for the unprepared. Finding one of these radios in the world, or even in a car, can give you a huge advantage when it comes to dealing with the hordes and weather to come. Too many times I have walked straight into trees when going into thick brush which usually results in my death or a couple of scratches and scrapes on the way. There is a way to avoid this though for the most part. If you right click and press walk to, your character automatically passes through the forest avoiding any obstacles. You can also speed up this by holding shift and your character normally jog through the forest automatically finding the most essential route to go through. This can be especially useful when you need to make an escape through the forest and time is of the essence. Now this actually isn't in game, but it's tremendous in its help nonetheless, especially for the beginning player. The map for Project Zomboid is pretty darn massive and it's very easy to get lost inside it. And the in game maps only cover the cities while the back roads cover a good 80% of the actual map. This website gives you the entire Project Zomboid map in great detail, so you can actually navigate around the world. It's especially useful for finding places that you would have never thought of. I will be linking the website for the entire map down below. Check it out, it is honestly very darn useful to have. I haven't used this too much, but I probably should because of how useful it is. But during the first few days in the apocalypse, you can catch some television programs in the life and living section. These TV sections give you free levels to skills such as carpentry and cooking. This is especially useful to speed up the grind and needed beforehand. You can find the airing times on the wiki if you are more interested. I will also have this link down in the description below. One tip that I love personally, due to its practicality and aesthetics, is using furniture to barricade entrances and openings. Right at the bottom of your left sidebar, you are able to pick up and place different pieces of furniture. You can pick up things without any tools, like fridges and chairs. With this knowledge, you can get all the furniture and barricade an area if you can't afford putting a car in front. Zombies are actually pretty finicky with the furniture, and 9 out of 10 times they won't target the barricade, making the furniture base pretty darn safe. Putting a quick fridge or sofa in front of a door may also buy you necessary time to formulate a plan while the dead knock on your door. One thing that a survivor should always keep an eye out for, especially during the later months when zombies are at an all-time population peak, is the items actually on that undead cadaver. Every zombie has a chance of spawning with a very nice piece of loot, whether it's just a simple screwdriver, or something way more important such as the katana, one of the best damage dealing weapons in the game, or a large backpack with a capacity of 30 and a weight reduction of 90. While avoiding hordes is generally a good idea, it's always important to actually take a second to just take inventory of what the zombies actually have on them, because it may or may not take the entire hassle of horde clearing worth it. Playing with sprinting zombies for so long has made me really appreciate the equalizer of the fence. The low fences are a great way to break up hordes and a very easy way to get kills right off from the bat. The double fences also allow for an easy getaway that can break line of sight and lose interest of the biggest of hordes. A couple of things to be wary about before you start using fences is that the low fences can break with overuse, and climbing two tile fences can exhaust your character very easily. Zombies can also lunge at you while crawling from the low fence, so it's best to make sure you only hit one or two and get out of dodge before the zombies can get in a lunge and trip your character up. One thing that I always told myself was that guns are a death sentence in this game. 9 out of 10 times, but it actually isn't the case for two firearms. Both the M36 revolver and M9 pistol are weapons that can be used without attracting the entire town to your location. The M36 revolver has a sound radius of 30, and the M9 has a sound radius of 50. So if you have a decent enough shooting skill and want a reliable firearm that won't attract too many zombies, 
especially with the M36, look no further. Now, zombies will still be attracted, but it won't be as many as, say, a shotgun with the sound tile of 200 to 250. So if you still want to shoot a gun in your vanilla game without going on a suicide mission, look no further. Grab one of these bad boys and you'll be all set for the future. Now, this is a bit of a new tip I have for people returning, as I don't think a lot of people know of it just yet because it just recently got added, but it gives a huge advantage to those that want to stealth areas and grab the attention of a few zombies without bringing the entire horde with it. Usually, the shout button normally mapped to the Q key is an easy way to screw up and die, but recently, the developers have added the option to sneakily shout, which only affects a very close proximity to you. All you have to do is go into the sneaky mode and press the Q key. Your character should say something along the lines of a quiet hey instead of a loud shout. This is especially useful in attracting zombies inside a home out into the open to fight, or making sure no zombies lie behind a bathroom door. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different, as it doesn't have to do with the actual in-game survival, but it's one of the reasons why I was able to personally clock 500 hours on this game. Playing just the same mode over and over again can get boring after a while, so changing things up just might be what you need to get more mileage with the game. You can do something as simple as making a survivor based on yourself in-game to see how long you can fare against the apocalypse, or as complex as designing your own challenge run that follows a zombie or horror movie. With the very free sandbox mode and the ever-growing number of mods, the sky's the limit. Hell, I was even able to design a horror-themed run where batteries and flashlights were the lifeline instead of the usual like food and water. Getting creative can turn a decent game into a work of art if you so desire, so go crazy and think of any wacky challenge you can. Trust me, it makes the game so much more enjoyable. Anyways, I think that's gonna be it for the top 10 things I wish I knew before playing Project Zomboid Build 41. I hope you got something of use out of the entire thing, and I applaud you for making it this far in the first place. It'd mean a lot if you subscribe, as I cover a ton of Zomboid content with some pretty wacky challenge runs, many consisting of sprinting crackhead zombies. If I missed anything that you would have included, feel free to tell me in the comments section below. I read and try to reply to every single one. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for today. I hope y'all have a damn good day. Peace out.